everyone. Our first case is Castano versus Jimenez. Uh, Your Honor, uh, may it please the court, my name is Nancy Ware. I'm representing Brian Castano. Um, this gentleman, I understand to my right, uh, Ms. Jimenez, the pro se uh, appellee, has brought in to translate. She didn't give me any notice that she was uh, bringing a translator. I have no idea if he's certified, and I will object to, I would object to that. Well, I have no, had no notice of it, and he is not, as far as I can tell, qualified. Counsel, we, we note your concern. When we have a pro se litigant, we usually, although the rules apply to them, like to everyone else, um, if they can't speak enough English to give us their argument, we let them be helped out by someone. And um, we don't take, trans you know, you have an issue here that basically we understand on the briefs, and we understand for her briefs. So we will give her an opportunity to explain as best she can. And if she needs a little bit of help, we'll let her get a little bit of help. But we note your objection. So go ahead and proceed with your argument. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the, uh, the, our first issue is that Ms. Um, Weir, Ms. Jimenez, I, before you get started, let me interrupt you for a moment. You want to reserve some time for rebuttal? Oh, I would. Uh, a couple of minutes, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Jimenez failed to meet the burden of proof that's required. Uh, we had, uh, we had uh, five civilian witnesses, I believe, including the defendant and two police officers who all testified, including the police officers, that um, the, she was in no fear at the time of the original, the original contact. Um, so, the, so the situation is that she was moving under the portion of the statute that talks about imminent harm, but she failed to, she failed to present uh, any evidence on that issue. Indeed, the only witnesses that she presented were was a witness who didn't know her from any from any time prior to her leaving the home of her own accord, and uh, and it was all hearsay. It developed. It was all hearsay. It was objected to, and the court overruled the objections as well. The court called uh, uh, Mr. Castano's trial attorney chose not to call the second police officer. Was there a, a finding of credibility at all? By the trap, by the court below. Uh, well, I I have to assume sub silentio that she found some credibility with the with the petitioner. But in fact, when you're when you're opposed by numerous witnesses, and by the way, because of all the many continuances that the court took in the case, some of my clients' witnesses who were non-relatives were unable to come to the continued hearing. Um, but they were uniform in saying, no, he never. There was never any kind of abuse, emotional, physical, or anything else. Um, and but that's uh, contrary to what she testified. <clears throat> she testified that she was always in fear. Yes, uh, but and so there because I've read, you've read sure. you have the transcript of the proceeding, sure. but the, and that she was always in fear, and she was afraid of him. She was a, she was afraid to move out. She was afraid to do any of these things. That's what she said. Except that she had never made a new report to anybody, despite having dozens and dozens and multiples and hundreds of opportunities to do that. She didn't call 311. She didn't call the police. She didn't tell the police on, on this night in January 2011. Where she didn't have hundreds and dozens of dozens. She didn't have dozens and hundreds and multiple opportunities. She had some opportunities. We need she, to stick to the facts, they, to, the st to the facts here. Sure. What you, what you, uh, what you have is you have her testimony, and she said, he threatened you. For, I'm just reading out of one of her, one of her pages, one of her pages of testimony. He threatened you. Yes, exactly. What did we say? What did he say? Telling me that I was not going to see my son, then that he was going to accuse me of attempting to kidnap my son. Did he threaten your life on that day? Speaking of January 9th. Yes. Uh, Why didn't she tell any of that to the police officers? Well, that's counsel, not the we question. Counsel, we get to ask the questions here, counsel. I, I'm, she I'm had, and, and as you well know, as you well know, as you well know, cases are not decided on who has the most witnesses, right? It's substantial competent evidence. I understand that. And if I, there is substantial competent evidence, if you have this and you have, for example, you have the trial judge's mm -hmm. observation during the course of the testimony of the first Castano witness that he was hostile and her finding and her finding 
that the family itself was hostile, is not that together? You take all that together, isn't that substantial competent evidence? Your Honor, I, I didn't rest the case on that. I understand that that's what Your Honor is saying. I think that it's more than rebutted by the testimony but that's not the of issue. the Castanos. That, that's not people. the issue. Well, Rebutting is not the issue. We don't, Ms. Ware, you know we don't reweigh evidence here. We right. simply look at what the trial court has determined to, and decide whether there is competent substantial evidence to support yes, but that. This and this lady came forward and she testified that she was in fear because of the threats he made not only to, to keep her son away from her, but she feared also for her safety because there was some But the record history. makes it clear that she hadn't been kept away from her son, that in fact many she Well, counsel, let me ask you about that. Here's what the testimony was. Right. Testimony was, I've had enough in March. I leave. I have no money because I can't work here. I don't speak English. <clears throat> I live in my car for a month where I'm found by another witness who had a church sleeping in my car. I finally go back and I somehow manage to get my son because I sell my car in December and I rent, finally I'm able to rent an apartment. My, my husband comes to me and says, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, let my son come to my father's birthday party at the beginning of the January. I let him do it. And when I go to the door to pick up my son, what happens? He won't let me have my son. Now that's all in the record. Certainly, Your That Honor. is every simply as, bit of that. As and well. she calls the police at that moment and the police come and go, can't help you, it's the daddy. Your Honor, <clears throat> with, with, with great respect, and I, and I understand the public <clears throat> policy concerns that the court has, with great respect. I don't have any public is, policy concerns about that, Ms. Ware. My concern is you're here, without a, you're here on a record where the issue is, is there any competent substantial evidence to support what the trial court did below? I don't think, however, that that is the standard of review here. The standard of review is whether it was an abuse of the discretion for the court to disregard this uh, an enormous body of evidence. And in, in addition, I don't want to I don't want to over uh, pass over the second issue, uh, which perhaps I should have put first, which was the prejudice to the, to the client to uh, my client from the fact that the case was continued again and again and again, and the and the t uh, the uh, TRO was con uh, continued for seven months before there was a hearing. That's a denial of due process. And, and there's no, there was no other way for him to address it except in this appeal. But it's clear from this record, uh, it was ex parte on the vaguest of, of factual uh, allegations, completely vague. Counsel, if, he, uh, if, there's, on, a, if, there's, if there was some allegation that something hap was happening uh, or not happening, I should say, in the trial court, there are remedies for that you, 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 you recognize. I don't know what the remedy would be other than on appeal, Your Honor. All right. From, well, then, from, well, then, when you have a chance, go look at original writs and read about petition for mandamus. Perhaps, uh, uh, yes, and beyond, uh, and beyond, and beyond that, the the injunction was ultimately entered for five years. So clearly, the trial court felt that there needed to be an extension. So, if there was any, if there, if if there's any arguable error, it's harmless error. Uh, I, I see the court's position on this, and you see um, you see one judge's position. I, I, there are two I, others I, here. I understand it. I, I unfortunately you can, you can, you can talk to them if you like. Counsel, you still get your two minutes for rebuttal. Thank you, Your Honor. I appreciate it. Ms. Jimenez, we'd prefer Ms. Jimenez to do it alone if possible. <clears throat> Ms. Jimenez, you have ten minutes. You have ten minutes. Yes. To tell us what you wish to say about the order that was entered, if you think it was correct or not correct. Am I you, allowed to speak? Or only at what she says and very briefly, because you're not an official. She, uh, can you repeat the question? Because I, Does she feel that the order below was correct, correctly entered? Sí, creo que es correctamente. La juez hizo la decisión correcta. Ella se dio cuenta que en ese momento estaba bajo presión psicológica. Okay, Ella that's a pretty long sentence. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Verás. She believes that the judge uh, made the right decision uh, because of the uh, evidence that was presented. Okay, thank you. That's really all we need to hear from her. 
Ms. Weir, anything else you'd like to tell us? Please be seated. Siéntese, por favor. Uh, I appreciate the court's attention, um, and uh, I'll well, the dilemma the you're in, so you know, um, how are we possibly to parse a claim that there was a firearm versus a claim that there wasn't a firearm? Because this, because Mr. Castano testified directly that the firearm had been sold years before any of this arose. That's specifically in the in the record. I, I, believe I recall paid. seeing it, but the question is, she says otherwise. And so how are, a credibility decision has to be made, and how are we to parse that? I do understand that, Your Honor, and indeed one of the difficulties with the domestic violence things is that um, we're, we're, at, we're being asked to disprove, an, uh, di to, to disprove uh, as opposed to proving something. It's very t hard to prove a negative. Often they appear to be pretextual, but at the end of the day, the trial judge has to look folks in the eye, make a credibility determination, and move along. That's correct, Your Honor. Ms. Ware, we, you know we can't, abuse of discretion or competent substantial evidence, because you know the test on abuse of discretion is no other reasonable person anywhere would make the same decision. And if there's some evidence to support what the trial judge does, we are, you know we're not in a position well, to second guess them. You've been very kind, and I appreciate it. Thank you.